Hey guys, I wanted to give you a few tips on editing the moon. So hopefully you guys got some good shots of the eclipse last night. I shot it from the Kofa Wildlife Refuge in Arizona and experimented with a few different focal lengths, but I mainly used my 150 to 600 Tamron lens. And this was an f6.3 aperture lens on the long end, so I wound up having to go a little bit higher on the ISO um, in order to still get a short enough shutter speed to not get trails in the moon. So I want to show you a few techniques for editing the moon that I think you'll find helpful. First we're going to edit a single image of the moon and then we'll move on to something a little more advanced, stacking multiple photos of the moon that were shot at a higher ISO for a cleaner image. So I'm in Adobe Bridge and when you open up a photo in Bridge, it's going to open it up in Camera Raw and then open it into Photoshop. But if you use Lightroom, you can follow along and make the same adjustments as Camera Raw is basically pretty similar setup to Lightroom. So zooming in, you can see that this is a super high ISO shot image this is 10,000 so the image is very noisy and even at 0.8 seconds I still got a little bit of a trail in the stars here so ideally I would have had to go a little bit shorter just to get a pen sharp shot of the moon but because I was dealing with an f6.3 aperture even at ISO 10,000 it was still difficult to get a little bit shorter all right, so the first thing we could do is we can go to the detail panel. And if I turn off color noise, you can see this looks pretty bad. If I ramp it up, it's gonna look a little bit better. I usually don't use the color noise when I'm editing Milky Way because it takes some of the color out of the stars, but in this case, it hasn't really affected the color of the moon, so I'm good with that. Then I'm gonna ramp up the noise reduction. You can see that's already smoothed this out a lot. And then we're gonna go with the sharpening. So I'm gonna sharpen this up and then you can also hold down option on a Mac or all on a PC and then go through the masking section here and this will actually mask out the sharpness and the shadows so it'll sharpen mainly just the highlights so that helps you to reduce the noise added when you're adding sharpening so I'm actually going to turn the noise reduction back down a little bit and now if I hit P on the keyboard that's backslash in Lightroom, the backslash key. You can see the preview of the before and after. All right, so next I'm gonna reduce the highlights a little just to maybe recover some of the texture and detail here in the brighter part of the moon. And I'm gonna bump up the whites and the whites is gonna make this pop a lot. So let me actually increase the shadows also and lift the blacks up a little. I'm gonna bring the whites back down a little. That was a little too extreme looking. And if I hit P on the keyboard, you can see the before and after. So we just basically cleaned this up a little bit, brought back some of the details and the highlights. And I keep it pretty basic for the raw adjustments. And then I just bring it into Photoshop to do the heavy lifting. So I'm gonna open this now, and I'm gonna open it up in Photoshop. And that looks pretty good. I mean, basically with a single image like this, you can just post this, you know, just as is and crop it and you know the main focus really is the moon with an image like this i actually probably would add a high pass sharpening filter so that's pretty easy to do you're just going to duplicate the background layer so command j or control j on a pc and we're going to go up here to filter and then other and then high pass we'll leave this set to 2.8 or set this to 2.8 if you don't have it set to that and we're gonna change the blend mode on this to hard light. And by default at 100%, that's gonna be really strong. So what we can do is we can bring down the opacity. And since we really just wanna increase the detail on the moon, we can add a layer mask. And then by default, the layer mask is white. We want this to be black, so we're gonna hit Command-I or control I on a PC with the layer mask selected. And then we're gonna grab our brush and with white, I can paint at 100% just on the areas where I wanna add some more detail to the moon. Go. And you can see it's a subtle effect, but it definitely adds a little bit more sharpness into an otherwise softer shot. Maybe I'll add a curves layer and just add a slight S curve. And you can see just that slight 
adjustment with the curves layer made the moon pop a lot more as well. All right, next up, I want to show you guys how I would stack multiple images shot at a high ISO to get a cleaner result. So this is really handy if you're shooting with a faster shutter speed and you need to ramp up the ISO, or if you're, for example, you know, shooting multiple images of the Milky Way or other Astro shots shot at high ISO, you can stack multiple shots taken back to back in Photoshop and wind up with a lot cleaner of a result. So here you can see a sequence of four shots that I took back to back. This works best if you take them back to back because they're gonna be closer to the original shot's position. Um, you will still probably need to do some manual lining up, which I'll show you in a second, but it just works better if they're taken back to back, for example, versus if you took them minutes apart where your subject being the moon or the Milky Way has moved significantly through the frame. All right, so I'm gonna select all four of these images. And again, if you're in Lightroom, just make your adjustments in Lightroom for these images. When I open them up in Camera Raw, I can just select all four and I can just do some quick basic adjustments. So let me increase the exposure a little bit, bring down the highlights. I'm not gonna do any noise reduction again because we're gonna do this stacking method. And you can see being shot at ISO 12,800, this is super noisy. So the results should actually be dramatic. So since I'm in camera raw using bridge, I'm just gonna click done and go back to bridge. So I'm in bridge with all four images selected. I'm gonna go up to tools and then down to Photoshop and then load files into Photoshop layers. And if you're in Lightroom, you're just gonna have all of your images selected, right click and then select edit in and then Photoshop as layers. All right, so now we have the images loaded into Photoshop and you can see if I turn the layers on and off individually, you can see there is some movement. So we do need to line these up. We could try to just do the auto align function, but I don't think it's gonna work as good as if we were dealing with a full sky of stars. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna do this manually. So what I usually do when I'm trying to line stuff up like this is I will change one layer at a time to a different blend mode. So difference is really good for trying to line up multiple layers so let me zoom in here and i'm just gonna have my move tool selected or you can hit v on the keyboard and then i can use my arrows on the keyboard to just nudge the layer over until they line up So one thing to keep in mind also is there's some slight rotation. So if we hit Command T and then just go to the edge, we can rotate the image as well slightly and simultaneously use the arrow keys to line up the shots. I think that looks pretty good. All right, so that's one down, so then we'll just turn this to normal. And you can see when we turn this layer off and on, there is very little visible movement. I think that's pretty good. All right, so we're gonna bring another layer above that and then line that up as well. So we're gonna change the blend mode to difference. Again, so I'm gonna use my arrow keys and just move side to side and up and down until I can line these guys up. That looks pretty good. Change it back to difference. I'm gonna hit Command T again and just do a slight rotation There we go, and then hit enter and hit normal. All right, and then we're gonna repeat that step for the last image. We're gonna bring that up to the top, change the blend mode to difference, and we're using the keys again. And 
Command T. Rotate it ever so slightly. You can make more minor of adjustments when you zoom in further as well. All right, hit enter and turn this back to normal. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is hold down shift with the top layer selected, hold down shift and click the bottom layer and that's gonna select all four of the images. And then we're gonna right click and then select convert to smart object. And I'm actually gonna make a duplicate of this too so I can show you afterwards the difference. All right, so now we're gonna go up here to layer and then smart objects and then stack mode and we'll go with median. And now you can see if I turn this off and on, you can see a dramatic difference in the noise. This is, a, this is gonna be a much cleaner version of the high ISO shots we got of the moon. So from here we can actually, you know, stamp visible or merge. I'm just gonna hit Command E. And we can do the same thing. We can do a little bit of a high pass filter. So make a duplicate and then go to other and then high pass 2.8 and change to blend mode to hard light. Make an inverted layer mask so you can just hold down option or alt on a PC and click on that layer mask and it'll make an inverted layer mask and grab your brush which is B on the keyboard and paint with white and just paint some of those details back in the moon. I think I'm actually just gonna paint that more in the brighter sections there, and I'm gonna turn the opacity down. You can toggle the keys to black and paint it out of the areas that you don't want it as well. And to get your default colors on, and to get your default colors for the brush, you're just gonna hit D on the keyboard. And again, we started with this very high ISO, super grainy, noisy image and wound up with a nice clean shot of the moon. So hopefully you guys found these tips for editing your eclipse shots helpful. If you do, definitely leave a comment on the video and tag me in your pics on social media so I can check them out and share them.